and block the whole thing. Well, why don't we bring in the former are. Trade Minister, Craig Emerson, right, and economist. Uh, now, before we get to that, I know, um, Craig, that when you were in politics, and indeed now he had a, a, a passionate view on domestic violence. Did you yeah, want to quickly did, uh, say something? I established parliamentarians against child abuse, um, you know, so that's the kids and really the parents too. We met often and we had groups in, but we weren't able to achieve the lift-off that people like uh, Elizabeth Broderick and Rosie Batty have done. And I think it is fantastic that people have dropped the idea that what goes on behind closed doors stays behind closed yeah. doors. Those doors are being opened by these great Australians and we've got to stay with this and make sure that we do everything we can to combat the scourge of domestic violence. Here, here to that. What about on the free trade agreement, though, the Labor Party? Do you think we were just talking about it? This is, in a sense, the segue to you. You're a former trade minister uh, within a Labor government. Do you, do you see them being hard-nosed, bloody-minded, call it whatever you want with a pejorative, enough to not let the free trade agreement go into effect well, because of elements? Before I explain that, facts matter. Facts are important. Opinion, people can have their own opinions, but they can't have their own facts. The government is saying that labour market testing, that is seeing if there are Australians available to do the jobs, is mandatory. That is false. That is untrue. It is not mandatory. That's why people are raising concerns about that problem, that whether labour market testing is required. Uh, hang on, OK, so that's not in the agreement, Dr Emerson, yes. but uh, OK, it's not in the, in the wording of the agreement, but the 457 visa requirements are still required. I mean, we don't have, you can't drink, drive, uh, you know, in the China Free Trade Agreement. That, that doesn't mean that workers and, from China can come over here and, and do, do that very... the 457 visa requirements are set out by the Immigration mm. Department, exempt pre-existing trade agreements, that is, with Thailand, with Chile, with the ASEAN nations. In addition to that, the relevant spokesperson for the Immigration Department, which administers these, has said that they would apply 457 visa requirements, that is work testing, labour market testing, other than in exceptional circumstances. In other words... So is your point they have discretion? Person, they have that, discretion about whether point. to apply? That's the point. They have the discretion. Mm. Now, how does that change? They can just change their minds. There is no legislation requiring them to apply labour market testing. What about, under, what really, about, what what about under the ASEAN and mm. Chile Free Trade they can't. Were they? They're exempt. Was it mandatory then, though? No. And, and I think they were not included in the ASEAN and Thai and Chile Free Trade Agreements. But for the future, an immigration department official, the head, sure. without any recourse to the parliament, can say on any project it is not required. But why, but why would any government, Labor or Liberal, do that? Why would they well, deal, two, why would they deal Australians out of a job two, with, with their discretion? Two examples. One, uh, a Conservative government such as this one says we do not want union members on this project site. So the Immigration Department gets a message from the Minister's office says we don't think this particular project should have labour market testing. The Immigration Department can then say... Why we're going it to okay in the ASEAN agreement, but not for the China one? Well, because there are concerns it. in... I don't know whether it was okay in the ASEAN agreement, but there are obvious proposals called investment facilitation agreements, which mm. are unique to the Australia-China free trade deal, which actually talks about labour market testing. Now, when the government says it is mandatory, it is not. So, I actually think that the agreement should come into force. How do we do this? You do not need to renegotiate one syllable of that agreement. Just bring in a separate bill which says for all future trade agreements, labour market testing is mandatory. Now, How, the would, government the Chinese shouldn't view have that? How would the Chinese view that? Because this deal has been done. As Trade Minister, you worked sure, on this deal. This has been 10 years in the making. Okay. Would that put this at it risk? It should not because the government... It should not or it will well, let not? Me explain. The government is saying it is mandatory. It is saying it is mandatory. If it is mandatory, put a bill in the Parliament saying it's mandatory. Well, I mean, I can't understand... But isn't part of the agreement that why, the Chinese want that discretion, that. want that discretion built into no, this? the Australian government created the discretion. At, at the request of the no, uh, Chinese? there's nothing in the agreement that says that labour market testing must apply or must not apply. This is the making of the Australian government to give itself the discretion. Well, to the give itself the discretion. I mean, oh, 
the flip side, Laura, is that if the Chinese requested it and the Australian government put it in, why put it in if it's never going to be of any relevance? And why tell people that it's mandatory when it's not? The argument from the government mm -hmm. is that this isn't a problem. Well, if it's not a problem, then why do the Chinese insist on having it in there? And why wouldn't the government amend the Migration Act to remove the discretion from the Immigration Department to implement what the government says it is its policy? <laughs> Otherwise, mm. the Immigration Department can get a phone call from the Minister's office say on this particular project, we don't want Labor money. But, but in the end, Dr Emerson, aren't we talking about a small section of a potential workforce and a very well, we small know. number of future projects? Well, we don't know. I mean, if it's a small number of future projects, that would raise the question, and I'll seek to answer, what's the big deal in these investment facilitation agreements if it's just a small number of future projects. One of the big selling points of the, of the China-Australia Free Trade Agreement is these investment facilitation agreements are you butte things and they're going to bring all these investment benefits to Australia. So again, the government can't have it both ways and say, look, it's just a small part, but, but you actually don't, it's you a You don't dispute the, the importance of getting this free trade agreement done. I mean, 10 no, no, years, 10 years to, in I'm the making, and, and but also the timing of it. I'm, it needs I'm, to be signed, sure. uh, passed through Parliament I'm, I'm by October, just really. To get people to follow the logic then we can discuss opinions my opinion is it should pass but it is false for the government to claim that labor market testing is mandatory therefore let's fix the problem and accept the government at its word and it will put that piece of legislation through now in terms of timing I don't think this has gone through the Joint Standing Committee on Treaties. No, it's... I don't think that no. there is a piece of legislation for Labor to look at. Not right? yet. Not yet. In the so October Tony Abbott period. is saying, pass it. Bill Shorten, pass it. Bill Shorten says, can we see the legislation? No, pass it. And if you don't, you're not on our side. The world that the Prime Minister occupies is a world of goodies and baddies. Mm. He used this phrase, whose side are you on, when he was criticising the ABC and asserting that they supported terrorism. And this stuff about Team Australia, unless you do it Tony Abbott's way, you're not on Team Australia, I think is absolutely But Dr Emerson, you must be frustrated at the, the politics that's been played on the Labor side of this as well. Certainly, uh, there's been, it, it's been escalated from the government side as well about claims of uh, xenophobia, but it's been uh, quite the same on the Labor side of politics. Well, I would rather it wasn't politicised. It wouldn't be politicised if it didn't have this gaping hole in it. Fix the gaping hole, you fix the Well, the, the union ads don't help. Sorry? The union ads well, They're pointing help. out that labour market testing is not mandatory. The government is saying it is mandatory. Mm. What are you supposed to do in those circumstances? So, well, Tony Abbott says it's mandatory, even though we know it's not. We're just going to pretend it is because Tony Abbott told us to. There can be a debate about these things. Personally, I think it is embarrassing to have this debate in front of the Chinese. I think this is an agreement that is well worth having. So let's get the politics out of it and have Tony Abbott agree to Bill Shorten's request to sit down and talk about it. At this point, Mr Abbott has said he will not talk about it. Mm. We do not need to change one syllable of the agreement, not one. There is a way through, and won't it be interesting to see if the political parties, in this case the coalition, are interested in finding that path through, which I've set out, or whether they just want to keep going on between now and October, saying anyone who raises concerns about this is racist or mm. is, is practicing xenophobia. Do, do you think, sorry, That's pretty appalling. Do, do you think emblematic, though, at the state of politics at the moment? We talk about the need uh, for good government, but there is also an obligation for a good opposition here. And do you think that's being delivered? Well, I think that the in terms of the way politics the is being played, has every right to highlight the fact that the government is making false statements is that I mean why wouldn't you as journalists on any issue mm. if the government is falsely claiming that labor market testing is applied it's the obligation of an opposition and the media to test those propositions and those propositions are false this is where we get into the <laughs> But I agree the, with the you legislation. The, the, the we're getting politics. to the end trails of no, uh, really, no, really the free trade agreement here. Not. It's not in the black letter of the agreement, well, though. But there are that, safeguards within our own legislation. It's, it consists mm. of text of the agreement, two MOUs, and a side letter. Mm. I've got the MOU. Yes, here. I've it, seen it. Yes, and you're saying it's not in the in the text. Of, you know, like it's not. 
there not will be the no requirement for labour market but testing it is in to enter into an IFA. When it comes to four, five, seven visas, yeah, and all those requirements do remain. Now, I didn't write this memorandum of understanding. Mm. Right? This says I'm from the country, so there will be no requirement for labour market testing to enter into an IFA. Boy from the country, I think that that means that there is no requirement for labour market testing to enter into an IFA. I understand IFA. that, but you have a more well, sophisticated no, view no, of how no, this deal no, is you done, Doctor. This Emerson. involves getting down into the entrails yep. of the agreement. Yeah, but you, that is, but you that understand is there that this in is more. It's more sophisticated than you're making out by just saying that, because there are safeguards in existing yes, legislation, the, namely the four, five, seven. And visas. the head of the immigration department hmm. has publicly said that the immigration department has the discretion to waive labour market testing. Now, if you think that's getting down in the entrails of it, mm. fine. I'm just interested in the facts. And the fact is, labour market testing is not required. As simple as that. OK, there you go. Peter Van Onselen, anything to add? Oh, no, I was just interested to watch. <laughs> Want to talk about the National <laughs> Council? I was curious, but I think we're out of time. Yeah, we are. I think we are as well. No Dr Everson, thanks so much thanks for, for your much. time. Yeah. Peter Van Onselen, that's a longest period of television I've seen you silent for. Yeah, well, Anything just, to add now? I was, no, I